Welcome back to CF Tesla and another Tips Friday video. Today we're talking about autopilot, but we're not talking about necessarily going out and using autopilot. We're talking about how to engage autopilot. If you're brand new to Tesla and you just get in your car now and you want to know, okay, how does this whole autopilot thing work? What do I need to be aware of? How do I engage it? How do I disengage it? What do I need to know to be safe using autopilot? We're going to talk about that here next. All right, let's get started with some of the basics. So, first of all, when you're looking at your computer here, you're looking at your front of your car, you've got your steering wheel, obviously, and you've got your gear stock right here. This is the sole thing you're going to use to engage autopilot. Don't bother looking anywhere on your screen. There's no way on there to engage autopilot itself or auto steer. And we should probably clarify a few terms. There's a bunch of different terms floating around out there. Autopilot is a generic word for the whole autopilot system. If you don't pay for the full self drive beta package, then you have what's called auto steer. And today, that's what we're gonna be talking about mostly, is just if you're a basic car buyer, you haven't paid for the upgraded package, how do you get your car into auto steer? I'm gonna use it interchangeably for the rest of the video. When I say autopilot, I just mean putting your car into auto steer where it's doing two things. The first thing it's doing is it's going to be driving for you, keeping it inside of the lanes. The second thing it's gonna do is it's gonna be adaptive cruise control, keeping you at a good pace between the car in front of you and whatever you set. And we'll go through how to set all that up here in a minute. Now inside of your settings, if you come in here and you go down to um, autopilot, which is gonna be the fourth option down, you're gonna have all your autopilot settings inside of here. Now, if you do not have the full soft drive beta, you have a lot less lines showing up here in your settings than somebody who does, who is on the full soft drive beta. Okay, so in, in your settings here, you have auto steer. And again, auto steer is gonna be just the base that comes with every vehicle. You don't have to have paid for any kind of upgrade, have auto steer. Navigating autopilot is for someone who has paid the currently $12,000 or subscribed to the monthly subscription to have the full soft driving beta package. Next, we go to customize navigate and autopilot. And here you have enable at the start of every trip. So what that means then is if you have a destination already into your computer that the car will automatically start navigating you to that destination and if you have the full soft drive beta program um, meaning like the full beta the one that some people are, are part of like i am a beta tester it'll start navigating you from the time you pull out of your driveway if you don't if you have just regular navigate and autopilot then it will start navigating you when you get onto a freeway and if you don't have any of those if you just have the regular auto steer you haven't paid for any upgrades then it won't start navigating you at all. You have to pay for the full self drive uh, beta, beta package to get these options. Speed base lane changes. I have mine on Mad Max, but you can change those to whichever. I just highly recommend you go through and don't listen to other people and what they like. Go through and try them all yourself and see which option you like the best. Basically what these mean are mild to Mad Max is gonna just base how long you, or how much many miles per hour you slow down before it changes lanes. Mild, an example would be if you're going 60 miles an hour, you might slow down to 54 miles per hour before you change lanes. Whereas Mad Max, you're probably never gonna slow down. It's gonna see the cars ahead and it's gonna change those lanes for you right off the bat. So that's that's gonna keep you at your max speed. Exit passing lane, yes. That means that if you do pass a car, it will get you out of the passing lanes. So you don't just continue to ride in the passing lane. Required lane change confirmation. Um, I, would, I have mindset to know what that means is that when the car wants to change lanes, assuming my hand is resting on the wheel, it will automatically go around the car in front of me and then get me back into that lane again when there's an opening. If you have it on yes, then that means that every time it wants to change lanes, you will have to confirm it by pressing the gear stock up or down or tapping on the screen to confirm the lane change. Again, these are all preference things. You can experiment with them to see how you like them. They're in here so that you can control them and maybe start slow to gain confidence in the system. So start maybe with confirming lane changes till you're familiar with it and you trust the car, then start working on taking them off. And then lane change notification. I have mine set so the steering wheel will vibrate as well as I'll hear a chime when the car wants to change lanes. For me, I just like to know what the car is doing, but you can turn that off so the car just changes lanes and you know you don't really feel or have any kind of feedback. Next, if you're part of the full self-driving beta, you have that switch there. 
uh, which most of you guys will not have. These are just some settings for the full stock driving beta. We won't go over those. Down here you have some toggle switches, one's for summon, one's for full stock driving visualizations, one's for traffic light and stop sign control. These are just all options that you can turn on to have more experience with the car as you're driving around. If you're not on the full stock drive beta program um, or even have paid for the full, for Navigate and Autopilot essentially, because you paid the $12,000, um, your car will ding if you run a stop sign or run a red light, but will not stop for you. If you've paid for the full soft driving beta program, uh, then you will, uh, it'll stop for stop lights and stop signs on your behalf. And if you are part of the actual beta driving program, which this video isn't about, um, it'll turn for you and all that stuff at lights. But most people will not have that. Underneath that, you got your customized settings for summon, where you can go in here and control how much distance you want when you're summoning your car into a garage, um, you know, to stop, you know, 16 inches from my bumper and then keep me at what distance from vehicles and stuff around the car. Uh, you can see side distances here, side clearances, I have mine set to tight, and require continuous press. This is referring to the app on your phone, and you can either press to come to me and then press to stop, or you can press to move the car, and then when you take your phone uh, finger off the phone, it just automatically stops. So this is getting into a lot of the other parts of all that, um, but for now, let's get back to um, our actual autopilot because the rest of these don't really pertain to autopilot and we're only focusing on that today. Turning it on, turning it off, how to engage it, run the, run the system and not referring to the full self driving system, just, just, the, just the auto steer and what most people are gonna have when they buy the car. So now for the sake of today's debt drive, I'm under my wife's profile. So I'm using just the regular non full self drive beta tester visualizations that you are gonna be seeing in your car as well. So the first thing you're gonna really wanna watch for here is when you see this little steering wheel pop up, that tells you that you can put the car into autopilot. If you do not see that, then the car cannot be engaged. Like right now it's gone. Because what happens to put the car into autopilot, you gotta have two different road lines visible in order to engage it. You only need one road line to really keep it accurate in its lane and run once, once it is engaged, but you need two to get it started, which means that if you're sitting at an intersection, you're not gonna be able to turn it on. You're not gonna be able to do that because it can't see the road lines. However, as soon as you get out of that intersection, you can turn it on. So as you can see right now, it has shown up in the top left corner. So to engage autopilot, there are two ways you can actually do this with the gear stock. Two halfway down poles, one, two, will engage it. You see the two blue lines there let you know you're in auto steer. The car is now steering for me. When you see that this is blue up here, the, where it says max 33, that is telling me that the uh, adaptive cruise control is fully underway and it is controlling my speed and distances. The second way to engage autopilot is basically the same as the first, but you can pull down all the way twice to do it um, as well. Now, to disengage it, there are three different ways to disengage autopilot. The first way, and the way that we all recommend, is to just simply push all the way up and in, into uh, to disengage autopilot. So just go ahead and just watch this. All the way up, it disengages autopilot and it disengages the adaptive cruise control. You can see that it's no longer blue. Now, when I put it back on again here, it'll go through intersections. So here we are going through an intersection, keeps us nice and straight, uh, no problem there. Now remember, your hand must always be on the wheel. It doesn't matter if the car is capable of driving without your hand on the wheel. Keep your hand on the wheel because that is what Tesla needs you to do so we don't get uh, more regulation issues and all that, but right now it requires that. Okay, so keep your hand on the wheel and about every 20 to 30 seconds or so, it's gonna request you to put a little more torque on it if you're not putting enough. Now, the max speed can be adjusted with the right steering wheel here. It depends how you have your settings set up. I have mine set up so that it goes 5% over the speed limit. And you can see right now what's happening is the car is in a wide lane because the left lane turns into a turn lane so it's jumping all over the place and it's having a hard time really centering me you can see I'm kind of off centered right now that's okay as soon as we start going again and the car sees the blue lot or the white center line up ahead it will re-straighten itself out but the car right now wants to center itself between the yellow line and the right center line so here we go and you can see now the car will recenter itself as it understands what's actually going on and then the lanes stabilize or the lines uh, stabilize there and so don't worry it's gonna do that all the time to you uh, you can see we went through the intersection there no problem Watch what happens right here as well as the dotted lines start to disappear. At the very end here, you might see a little bit of centering here as well, which can be a little bit to get used to, but that's fine. So, no, it's going to hold itself in that one. So, it just kind of depends. When it comes to go 
going and these parts of autopilot, like right there was a bit of a yell at me because it wanted me to put some pressure on the wheel. And you can see I centered itself there. I wasn't putting enough torque on the wheel. That's perfectly fine. Uh, just apply a slight torque. Don't do too much or it's gonna disengage it. So again, I can slide it up a little bit there. And you can notice that you can only go max five mile per hour over the speed limit. So right now it's speed limit's 35. It's, I have my max set at 40. Doesn't matter how much I roll it. It says autopilot is restricted to 40 miles per hour because that is the speed limit. If you're on the beta program, that's not a restriction, but if you're on just regular auto steer, regular autopilot, as I've been calling it, then you have to only go five over. So I showed you the first way to disengage it, which is to just push it all the way up. The second way is to apply it on the brake. When I tap the brake like that, it's going to disengage again full autopilot and it's going to disengage auto um, the adaptive cruise control. So those will both be turned off. Now let's put it on again and this time I'll put it on and you'll see that it's going to put it right at the current speed I'm going at 30, uh, 43, even though the speed limit's 45. You can tap on the speed limit, it'll put it up to your max. So you can see I went up to my max of 50 because that's what I used to be at was five over the speed limit. So now I'm going 50 miles per hour. I could have also just spun the wheel right here and one flick of the wheel will go up five miles per hour. Um, slow moving the wheel will go up one mile per hour each. So if you want to go up 10 miles per hour, you just flick, flick. It'll get you up there. Same thing with going down. It'll get you flick, flick. Um, and it'll go down five miles per hour each time. So the third way of disengaging it, and this is a way that's really dangerous. I do not recommend you ever do it, but I want you to know about it because if you ever end up in this situation, you gotta know what's happening. Watch this, if I take the wheel, look at this guy, see that right there? Totally cut me off. Uh, that was autopilot hard braking because it saw that car cut me off like that and it braked. I instantly put my foot on the accelerator so I wouldn't brake check the people behind me because I knew I'd have enough time, but otherwise that would have been a pretty aggressive stop there to avoid hitting that car. So let's re-engage autopilot here. Now watch this. I'm just gonna take the wheel and just jerk it just a little bit like that. You can see that it turned off the yellow, uh, the blue lines. So auto steer is off, but look at that is still blue. So you may think that you've just terminated all autopilot functions, but you actually have not. In fact, what you've only done is turned off auto steer and the car is still going to uh, try and um, uh, you know, drive for you in terms of speed and stuff. So you gotta make sure you understand that. You're like, what's going, why am I still going? I thought I turned it off. No, you didn't, you just turned off auto steer. You still need to hit the brake or we recommend push the right gear stock all the way up um, to do that. And you know, you just keep your, your finger, I just keep my finger on it when I'm driving like this. I just flick it up, this, it's, you know, I'm on autopilot, just flick it up, off. And then I have full control back of the car again. I think one of the biggest reasons why people don't use autopilot is because they're afraid, well, what if it's doing something I'm uncomfortable with and I don't want it to be that way. I want to take control. It's very easy to take control. Never worry about that. That is a non-issue with autopilot. It doesn't matter what's going on. I can engage it right here in the middle of a turn and anytime I want it, I just hit the brake real quick and it's mine. Put the flip the gear uh, stock up real quick and it's mine. Or look at this, going through the intersection like, oh no, I need to turn left here. How do I do it? Oh, just, just grab the steering wheel and turn left. Uh, it's gonna disengage it. So you are in complete control of this. The car is in no way controlling you. You're not in any danger from anything like that. You're just fine. You have complete control to turn it off anytime you yourself go and interact with the autopilot or car, okay? Anytime at all. So here's an example of merging. So we're gonna be getting under the freeway here. I'm gonna down twice, halfway down. I prefer halfway down because it really helps. Now, when I watch this, I had to do uh, three quick swipes to get myself up to the speed that I wanna be to merge because it wasn't going to uh, get me there. It was still on 35. Um, it wouldn't have even seen the 60 until we hit this speed limit sign right here. But you can see it's gonna engage here. And then right here, as we pass these white dotted lines, you're gonna see the, the blue line's gonna jump around a bit. See that? It's gonna widen out as it finds itself in the middle of a center lane and then smoothly merges me, smoothly merges me onto the interstate. So works very well and um, you just gotta kinda let it do it. The one thing it will not do is it will not turn on its blinker um, when it is merging. So if that's something that you like doing when you get onto a freeway, I think you're supposed to do that, you're gonna have to do that yourself. Now, if you've paid for the full South Drive Beta program, here's an example of turning uh, turning lanes. Okay, if I take the left gear stock here, or indicator stock, and I press down like this, okay, you can see it's gonna automatically do it. My hands are over here, it's changing lanes for me, okay? Uh, same thing if I wanna go back, I just right put it up like this again, and it's gonna go um, all the way back for me, okay, without me having to do anything other than just putting on my blinker. Now, keep in mind, there's two ways of putting on your blinker. There's halfway down, and then there's all the way down. If you only do it halfway down, 
that's it's quite dangerous to do that, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, if you do it halfway down and you and you and you hold it, what happens is it's when you let go of it. If your tires are not more than halfway over that white line, it'll shoot you back in your lane. You're gonna freak out, going, "What's going on?" You're gonna think the car is freaking out. When the reality is, it thought you just changed your mind. So if you're gonna use the car to change lanes. Do it all the way down so the car knows you're committed to that lane change. It'll search for a, a, a safe time to do it and then get over. It won't change lanes if there's a car in the vicinity over there. It does it very safely. It's one thing it's really good at. But if you don't have the navigate and autopilot in your car because you didn't pay the now $12,000 or a monthly subscription, you will then have to turn off autopilot, change lanes, go around somebody, and when you get back in the lane you want again, and re-engage autopilot. Here's an example. There's a car beside me right now. If I put on my blinker, watch. It's, see, it's gonna turn the car red, it's gonna wait, and then it's going to actually change lanes here. And here's an example too. I'll just show you guys, because there's the people behind me are school buses, they're not gonna <laughs> think I'm too crazy. I'm gonna take the right gear stock right now, and I'm gonna half push it up. It's gonna go ahead and go. I'm gonna let go of it. And then watch, see how it shoots back into my lane again? That's what I'm talking about. It's a little bit kind of freaky, so just, if you know why it's doing it, it's fine. Um, I'm probably gonna be reported for driving drunk with all the changing lanes I've done in front of this bus. So speed, uh, all, all the speed limits and all that kind of thing, it's gonna be when the car sees the speed limit sign, it's gonna adjust. Just always be ready to manually adjust it yourself if it misses it, and it's all done right here with the right gear stock. And then the last thing I'll, I'll talk to you guys about, or one of the last things, is how to adjust the gap between the car in front of you. And that is done with this right gear stock here. So if you turn it to the right, what it's gonna do is it's gonna shorten the distance of cars in front of you. I generally keep it at three. So now right here, I'm gonna disengage autopilot by hitting the brake. As I'm slowing down to take this turn, I'm gonna hit the right turn and take it. If I was navigating right now, it would automatically have taken that exit if I had the navigate and autopilot package. If you have regular just auto steer, like cars that don't have the upgrade, you have to disengage autopilot to get over. Now, if I getting back, you know, getting back to the gap, if I want to lengthen the gap between me and the car in front of me, I would I just press it to the left here like this. So up and down controls the speed, right and left is gonna control the gap and distance between you and the car in front of you. So now if you do have autopilot in your car and, and no upgrades, but there's a car stopped in front of you like this at the light in front of you, the car will stop because it's just simply not gonna hit the car in front of you. It's not stopping at all right now because there is a red light. Well, my car is, but if you didn't have the upgrade to navigate an autopilot or the full soft drive beta, uh, then your car is still gonna stop in this scenario. But if this car was out in front of me, it would run the light, ding at me that I'm running a red light, but it would still go through the light because you haven't paid for it to have that kind of control in your car. But of course, that's, that's done with just a simple $12,000 purchase. So when this car goes, we will also go because the car in front of us went. It's just thinking like it's in traffic right now. It, again, it's no association with the red light. So watch this here. The car goes and there goes the car itself. Um, you always can tell if you're in autopilot, if you're wondering because of two things. The lines here are blue and the steering wheel is blue. If the steering wheel is blue, you are engaged in auto steer, not, uh, not, not adaptive cruise control, auto steer. If I, I can still go like this, take back control of the steering, auto, the steering wheel is now gray, uh, but I'm still using adaptive cruise control. And by the way, on that note, if you want to just use adaptive cruise control and not engage auto steer, because maybe you're not ready for that, one press down on the right gear stock engages that. So one press down, you see it locks it in there, it's now blue. I'm still steering the car, but the speed is being controlled by the car. So as far as recommendations, if you're a brand new person to autopilot, a couple things. Remember to always keep your hand on the wheel and try not to get fancy with it. Almost all the instances you hear about people getting in trouble or the bad things about autopilot are because people just weren't being responsible with the system. Tesla is very clear on how to use autopilot. It looks like this. Your hands are just on the wheel. You're keeping pressure on it at all times. You're being engaged and you're ready to take over if at any time you need to. Tesla has not ever once said you can just ignore the car and let it drive for you, and it, and you can't. There are going to be times when you're going to have to take over because the car because the car is not responding in the way that you're comfortable with. It's really good, and, and you don't you shouldn't be afraid of it. It's really good, but you still need to be alert and aware as it is still in beta. Keep your foot over the accelerator at all times as well. Now you might say, why accelerator? What do you mean? Don't you mean brake? No, I mean the accelerator. 
the car is phenomenal at braking. You're never going to have an issue with it brake not braking. The issue is with it braking too much. And so there is something called phantom braking that can sometimes happen. It's nothing like it used to be. It used to be way worse. And that is when you're driving down the road and the car thinks there's an object that is coming into its path. And so because of that, it could be a shadow, could be a glare off the sun. It could be another car not really in your lane, but the car thought it was coming in your lane. And the car will hit the brake hard. It can go down anywhere to 10 miles per hour usually between one and five, but it can go down as low as 10 below the speed limit, like instantly within seconds. And so when you hover over the, the, uh, the accelerator with your foot, you can control that. Just put some pressure on that instantly. You'll take over instantly and, and it won't disengage autopilot. You'll still have auto steer and adaptive cruise control running. You can use the accelerator. That's a good point. You can use the accelerator in autopilot. If you want to go faster yourself, you can do that. It'll just tell you on your screen that auto braking and whatnot will not work when you're the one accelerating. Uh, but in those situations where it's breaking hard, just quickly press it and you can usually kid it when it's like one or two miles per hour dropping. So the people behind you aren't getting freaked out. They don't know what, you know, brake checking them or anything like that. Uh, so just keep it hovering there. But other than keeping your hand on the wheel and putting your foot on the accelerator, it's just a wonderful experience and something that you have to go out and do to get confidence on. This video is a guide to get you started, everything you need to know about getting it going but to actually gain the confidence to use it, you need to get out there and do it just like everything else. So I hope you guys felt this uh, informative. If so, please give me a like that actually helps this channel stay going by you guys taking the time to go down below, hit the like button and leave a comment um, down below. That really helps me out. And of course, for more videos and tutorials, make sure you've subscribed and that you've hit that bell notification. And if you have, uh, you'll catch all our future drives. We do Wednesdays, uh, just random videos, product reviews, uh, Fridays are tips videos like this and then any uh, drive videos are often done on Monday. So thanks for coming back and I'll see you guys on the next one.